Hey everybody, uh, what's up? Um, this is um, going to be another video. Of, I know I've done this some, but this is going to be Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Stig. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his favorite hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shapes and colors. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, he found a quite extraordinary one. It was flaming red, shiny, just like a shape of a marble. He picked it up and then made a, he didn't know the, the pebble was magic, so he picked it up in his hoof and said, I wish it would stop raining. And to his great surprise, it did. It didn't stop like rains would usually do. It just ceased. He was shivering from excitement from the rain cold on his back, though, by the way. There was no rain. The sky was shiny. And then he said the same thing. Frankie the test putting the pebble on the ground and said, I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened. He said the same thing, except holding the pebble in his hoof and said, I wish it would rain again. And to his great surprise, it came back. Thunder clapped and he guessed that the pebble must the work in the pebble might be in the magic red pebble and he was he thought for a long while and he said I can have everything I want my mother and father can have the, everything they want my friends and my relatives can have everything and everybody anything want as he was crossing strawberry hill amazed to to show his mother and father the pebble. They may not believe him at first. He was so excited and he, as he was crossing Strawberry Hill, he stumbled upon a mean, hungry lion looking behind, looking at him behind some tall grass. He was frightened. If he hadn't been so frightened, he could have made the lion disappear. He could have wished him to be a flower, a gnat, or a butterfly, or a daisy. But he panicked and couldn't think carefully. He just said, I wish for a rock. And less than an instant, he was a rock. And then the, the lion came bounding over, sniffing the rock a hundred times. And went away, he confused, perplexed, and bewildered. I saw that little donkey as clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy, he muttered. Then there was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill. With the magic pebble lying beside him on the ground. Oh, I really wish I'm my real self again, he thought, but nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work, but there was nothing he could do about it. His thoughts began to race like mad. He was scared, worried. He, f Being hopeless, he felt hopeless. And his only chance of becoming himself again was he for someone to find the magic red pebble and wish that the rock next to it would be a donkey. Someone would surely find the red pebble. It was so bright and shiny. But what on earth make them wish that the rock would be a donkey? The chance was one in a billion at best. Sylvester fell asleep. What else could he do? Night came with many, many stars. Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan paced the floors, frantic with worry. Sylvester had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? said Mr. Duncan. They stayed up all night wondering what had happened. Expecting that Sylvester would surely turn up by morning, but he didn't, of course. Mrs. Duncan cried a lot, and Mr. Duncan did his best to sue her. Both longed to have their dear son with them. I would never scold Sylvester again as long as I live, said Mrs. Duncan, no matter what he does. At dawn, they went about and inquiring of all the neighbors. They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. Even the police could not find their child. All the dogs in Oatsdale went searching for him. They sniffed behind every rock, tree, and blade of grass, and every gully, and, and everywhere in the neighborhood, but not found, found not a scent of him. They even sniffed a rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. 
It did not smell like Sylvester. After a month of searching the same places over and over again and inquiring the same animals over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual ways, but their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. The days grew cold. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only helpless and unhappy. Then it was winter, and the leaves, the snows blew, the winds blew. Then it was spring. The flowers showed their young faces. Trees were on the, the leaves were on the trees again. Everything budded. One day in May, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. We must try to live again and be happy. Even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us, they went to Strawberry Hill. Mrs. Duncan sat on the rock. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. Oh, how he wanted to shout, Mother, Father, it's me, Sylvester, I'm right here. But he couldn't talk. He had no voice. He was stone dumb. Mrs. Duncan sat at the picnic food on the rock, and Mr. Duncan found the red pebble. What a fantastic pebble, he said. Sylvester would have loved this one for his collection. They sat down to eat, and Mrs. Duncan felt some strange excitement. Oh, you know, Father, I have a, the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is still alive and not far away. Sylvester heard him like, Mother, Father, I'm right down here, but he couldn't talk. He had no voice. If only he realized that the pebble was on, realized it was on the, his back was the magic red pebble. Mr. Duncan looked with great sorrow, and he asked, "How could you ask such a question?" They both looked at each other with great sorrow, and then, so this happened. I wish I were my real self again. I wish I were my real self again. Then, less than an instant, he was. You could imagine the scene that followed. The kisses, the hugs, the questions, the answers. Once they've gotten home and calmed down, Mr. Duncan put the, I the pebble in the iron safe. Someday they may want to use it. Well, what could they all wish for? They all have what they wanted. This is all I have for now. This is Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Stagg. Hope you liked this video. Bye-bye.